Hi, I'm Rebecca Balcarcel. Let's take a look at Sonnet 18. This is Shakespeare's famous, Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day? The first thing I need to say is that this poem is directed to a man. In fact, he's called the young man. And whether this means Shakespeare is gay, uh, we really don't know. Does it mean he's bisexual? We don't know. Uh, is he writing for a woman, on, you know, on a woman's behalf to the man? We don't know. So that's just a question that has to remain open. But we do know that this poem is addressed to a man. Draw your own conclusions. So it starts out, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Now before we go any further, I need to tell you that this references a common phrase, like a cliche, a saying, that was common in the Renaissance. And let me read what that is. It was, as good as one shall see in a summer's day. Which means, as good as it gets, you know, as good as the very best, as good as one shall see in a summer's day. So when Shakespeare's audience heard this, they would naturally be thinking of that phrase, like, oh, this is echoing that saying. So it would be kind of familiar to them. All right, now this video is going to be pretty long because Shakespeare packs so much into this poem, and it's going to take us a while to work through the whole thing. I'll just read two lines at a time and try to you know, unfold as much as I can. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. So he starts out by saying, well, should I compare you to a summer's day, which is normally something people think of as very good, very, you know, pleasant. And he says, oh, but no, you're more lovely than that. And you're more temperate. And I want to highlight this word temperate. It means more um, moderated. Uh, tempus refers to time. Tempus is the Latin for time. So the, the, the beloved is more measured and more moderated than the usual summer day, which might be kind of reckless and wild. It's steady would be another association with temperate, steady. It's like the word tempo, where you've got a nice regular rhythm going. The beloved is more like this than like a summer's day. Now there's another reason that this word temperate is appropriate appearing right here in line two. And that is that because the word is related to the word time, we can tell already that this poem's theme will be all about time. Time going by, whether things endure or don't endure, that, that's a theme throughout the poem. Okay, so thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. So here's some more reasons why you're better than a summer's day, my love. Uh, rough winds come along and shake the buds on the trees um, or bushes, and summer's lease is short. That means that uh, the summer has an expiration date. The, the lease has all too short a date, a date after which it ends. So summer is limited in how long it lasts. And this is a drawback. Next two lines. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed. Okay, so sometimes the sun, the eye of heaven is the sun, it's too hot, and at other times its complexion is dimmed. So the golden light of the sun is dimmed, and the, the gold complexion, either by uh, clouds or by the setting of the sun every day. So again, we have this time is passing kind of thing. Uh, the sun, I can't compare you to that because for one it's too hot, and for another it sets and it goes away, and it gets dim. And every fair from fair sometime declines, by chance or nature's changing course, untrimmed. I think these are the two hardest lines in the poem. Uh, every fair from fair sometime declines. So every beauty, that fair means to be beautiful, right? Um, but all of that beauty will decline, ultimately. So fair from some perfect height of beauty will decline to a lesser beauty, and fair from fair declines. So there's a, you know, a falling off of beauty over time. Okay, next two lines. 
by oh I'm sorry by chance or nature's changing course I'm trimmed I forgot that one um, so how is this declining happening it's either happening by chance that just from events by chance that your beauty will be reduced and you know maybe literally with an accident or a disease or something but uh, what is this untrimmed thing nature's changing course is going to untrim you well, if you've ever decorated a Christmas tree, then you know that we use the word trim to refer to decorating. So you trim the tree, you ornament the tree, you decorate the tree. So nature is going to untrim beauty. That means that all of us, as we go through time, just the normal course of nature is going to unornament us, you know, untrim us. We're going to be less decorated and less pretty, less beautiful as nature's course goes along. And nature's course also is changing, so it's not steady and reliable. We have an unpredictability to nature, and that is, you know, all the events of our lives are going to untrim us and make us less physically beautiful anyway. Okay, now the next two lines. But, now, all up to now, we've been listing all the reasons why my beloved is not at like a summer's day she's or he is better than a summer's day but here we have a turn in the poem but thy eternal summer shall not fade nor lose possession of that fair thou owest okay so your eternal summer is not going to fade so there's something inherently beautiful about you that's going to stay the same and is going to endure and last nor are you going to lose possession of that particular kind of beauty that you have, the fair thou owest. Now let me talk about the word owest. There's a, an apostrophe in there which indicates a missing letter. So the real word should be the beauty that thou ownest, the beauty that belongs to you, that you have, is going to, is going to last. So it says... Um, you will not lose possession of that fair, that particular beauty that thou ownest, that you own. However, because that N is left out, I mean, he could have just written ownest, but he wrote owest, which leaves out the N. So we have to think, well, is there another meaning with owest, meaning that you owe something? And there is. You render back, you give back, uh, you owe your beauty. It's not going to stay. You have to give it back. So as time goes by, superficial beauty is going to be given up and, you know, returned. It's kind of like you just get to borrow it and now you have to give it back. So in the same word, we have the ownest, what you own eternally and forever, and also what you owe, what you have to give up. All in the same word, you have this transitoriness and this permanence, uh, you know, wrapped up in this one word. So, so cool. Shakespeare's amazing. Okay, moving on. Nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. All right, so here's another thing that death is not going to be able to brag that you are wandering in his shade. Death is personified here as if he's some kind of person who is going to brag like, ooh, ooh, I got you. But no, he's not going to be able to do that because you, the lover, are, are going to be grown into time through eternal lines. So hold on a sec. Nor shall death brag, thou wanderest in his shade, and by the way, shade is like the shadow of death. Um, you know, death is as a darkness. And death will not say, oh, here you are wandering in my shade. And why are you not going to be truly dead? Because you're going to be grown into time with these eternal lines. It says, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. Now, how can this be? Well, the, the lines refer to um, a couple of things. This, this word is replete. Okay, so first of all, it is that you're going to be grown into time, as if time is, is a, a stream, and you're going to be joining that stream and preserved forevermore. 
Now, what kind of line would let you be joined with time? Well, lines of descent, lineage, uh, your, your DNA, can, if you have children, will go on forward in time. And in that way, you're preserved. So lines of descent, lines of heredity will let you join with the eternal time, capital time, you know, the stream of time that's, that's flowing forward. Uh, lines also can refer to a lifeline. Uh, in Shakespeare's time, they often thought of the life as a, a string that was cut by fate at the moment of death. So as soon as fate decides to cut your string, your lifeline, then your earthly life is over. So that line is going to be, you know, woven into the fabric of time, and then you'll, you'll join in with time. Uh, I think the lines of lineage is a, a more primary meaning in this, in this line here, in this, you know, piece, in the word. But uh, there's a third line that I want to mention. The meaning as a cord, as a rope that ties something, that makes sense because if we're talking about uh, a process of grafting my individual life onto the kind of eternally flowing uh, life of the planet, you know, through DNA, my, my life will join with time, um, that's a grafting process. And... Uh, people who know about plants know that you have to use cor cords and, and string to kind of smush one stem onto a larger one, and it'll eventually grow into one plant. So that's the third meaning of the word line here. Uh, lineage, lifeline, and cords. So let me read it again. Nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. Okay, so these are all why you're not like a summer's day that ends, because you're going to continue. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Now what is this? This is the poem. So long as men is... So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this poem, and this poem gives life to you. So you will be eternally preserved in the poem. And now we have a fourth meaning of the word line, which would be lines of poetry. Isn't that cool? <laughs> um, wow. All right, now one last thing I want to show you. Um, here's a list of some of the words that are in this poem shines, dimmed, declines, fade, shade. This shows a progression of the sun setting. And it's also a progression of life passing from shining to dimming, declining, all the way down to shade, the shade of death. So while this feels like a love poem, and it is, uh, it's addressed to the beloved, it's more than just a love poem. Uh, it's more of a comment on what lasts, what's eternal, and what is not lasting, not eternal. Time ha destroys things, but also some things are preserved. And in this case, he's saying, you, the beloved, will be preserved in my poem, and also you'll be preserved in your uh, descendants, you know, in the traits that you hand down to your descendants. Uh, and in this way, you are way better than a summer's day. <laughs> All right. Phew. I hope you enjoyed that little trip through the poem and join me for another poem on another day. Thanks a lot.